Maintaining good personal hygiene is essential, and the practices used today to uphold it can be vastly different from those of the past. There were many customs in the Victorian era that would simply be frowned upon and unthinkable today. Ultimately, the way of cleansing and taking care of oneself back then underwent a 180-degree turn, and we can only be grateful for it. In this video, we will tell you about some of the practices used in the past to maintain good hygiene, and you may be glad that they are no longer done in that way. Number 1. They didn't bathe daily. Not even the wealthiest families bathed daily, but they didn't remain dirty. It was customary for most people to wash in the morning, usually with a sponge and a basin with their pitcher of water. These were located in the bedroom. Some women added a bit of perfume to the water. Certain men took baths with a sponge of cold water in the mornings using a small portable tub, without requiring their servants to heat the water and transport the amount of water needed for a full bath. Number 2. They whitened their clothes with urine. The way they washed clothes varied depending on what they wanted to achieve, if they needed to remove oil and grease from the fabric, they used chalk, if it was to eliminate odors, they used milk. For whitening, they had a technique that worked but was not the most pleasant, they soaked garments in urine. Although this whitening method is efficient due to the ammonia content in urine, it is no longer used today. Number 3. Dental Care Dental care was not very advanced during that time. In fact, most procedures were simply extractions. They did brush their teeth, usually with their finger and salt. And many places didn't have dentists, so they performed such procedures in barber shops. Number 4. Cloth Pieces for Menstruation Today, a woman can find various ways to deal with menstruation. From menstrual cups, tampons, sanitary pads, to comfortable and stylish underwear designed for that purpose. But in the past, there weren't many options to choose from. One rather uncomfortable method was a belt that held a cloth resembling a diaper. The belt had buttons or fasteners to secure the absorbent fabric. It emerged in the late 19th century and was patented in 1922. Number 5. Kitchen Ingredients for Hair Care Hair was very important during that time, so they took good care of it. However, shampoos did not exist back then, so the most common solution was to use vinegar and eggs. They also used rum, rosemary, and black tea. All of these applications were quite normal for hair care and, moreover, were effective. Number 6. Clothing according to their needs. Women wore hoop skirts that were quite large and uncomfortable. Their underwear consisted of bloomers that had an opening in the crotch so that women could simply bend over the chamber pot without completely undressing to fulfill their needs, as doing so would take too long. Number 7. They used bathrooms differently. Indoor bathrooms became popular but had a drawback, there was no plumbing. Without pipes to carry waste away, it would fall into a sewer or pit dug in the basement. When it filled up, the whole house would start to smell bad, so they hired men to come at night to remove the waste, which was then sold to farmers as fertilizer. Number 8. Application of Deodorant In 1888, a deodorant called MUM was introduced, which consisted of a white paste containing a zinc compound. It was applied with the fingers and took a long time to dry. Number 9. Dangerous Makeup In the Victorian era, women aimed for a natural look with clear skin, bright eyes, and lips with a subtle color. However, achieving this look often involved harmful processes. They used arsenic to make their eyes sparkle. 
The use of belladonna to dilate the eyes and make them appear larger was also common. This practice was very dangerous as it can cause blindness. A cheaper way to achieve this appearance was to squeeze lemon or orange juice into the eyes.